Hello there, and welcome back to this Projects and Enterprise Java course. So, today we're going to be continuing our social network application. And today we're actually going to be going ahead and uh, finishing up the account system. I think I, I said we would do it la in the last episode, but in the last episode, in the last lesson. But um, we didn't, so we're going to do it now. Um, so let's very quickly go ahead and create a new class. This is going to be our uh, register action. There we go. And in our register action, what we're going to go ahead and do is uh, um, make it ex extend um, action support. There we go. All right. And let's add the uh, execute method public uh, string execute return success. There we go. All right, there we go. And uh, now in struts.xml, we can do create a new action here. And the name will be register. And the class is going to be register action. Yeah, there we go. All right. And uh, here we're going to go ahead and do um, on success, we're going to do register, we're just going to do index.jsp since if you successfully registered, you just need to sign in now. And on input, we're going to do um, slash register.jsp. There we go. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, add in a new view here new JSP file, and this is going to be uh, register.jsp. All right, there we go. Now, we need to create the registration form. So to do this, let's go ahead and go <coughs> here in index.jsp. Let's go ahead and copy this tag lib prefix. into uh, register.jsp. There we go. All right. So now that we've done that, let's insert the title here. So let's just do register. And then we can just actually copy this form as well um, into register.jsp. Let's add in actually a h1 here, uh, register. And then here form action is going to be register. And uh, text field key username, user dot username, label username, um, everything else we can keep the exact same. All right, so there we go. So now that we've done that, we can actually, in theory, in index.jsp, we can go ahead and um, actually, no, uh, yeah, we need to add a button here. So let's go and add a button as well. So to do this, it's actually pretty simple. So we're just going to create a regular form. Um, action equals slash social network slash register dot jsp. All right, there we go. And then here we're just going to have um, um, input type equals submit value equals register. There we go. All right, so now uh, when we run this, we're going to have a um, a button there where we just go to the registration page as well. And so let's go ahead and actually give this a second to start up. Let's go to our uh, browser. There we go. And now we have a button here, register, so we can click that. And now we're at the registration page. Uh, let's actually add a uh, to our index.jsp. Let's add another page, let's do h1. And here let's do um, uh, login. There we go. Just add that just to, you know, make it look a little bit, a little bit better. So refresh. There we go. We have a login there. So that should be pre that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and um, actually implement the registration. So here in register action, we're going to have a public public void validate. There we go. And let's also go ahead and uh, add the at override annotations. Override annotations, they don't actually do anything. 
they just throw an error if whatever you are overwriting isn't actually being overridden, if it's just a regular method. All right, there we go. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and validate. We also need to create the user here. So uh, private user user. Do I have a, do, is, there, is my user private in the login action? Yeah, it is. Just just made sure making sure that, that it is um, it is correctly done. All right, there we go. So private user user. Let's get the generate uh, getter and setter methods going. Going. They they sort of go. They don't really go all that long. Um, all right, there we go. And now we can actually implement the validate method. So inside the validate method, if you really think about it, all we really need to validate is that the username and password aren't empty, then that the, well, let's actually go ahead and do this. Um, so if string utils dot is empty, uh, user dot get username, then we're going to add field error. Um, and uh, the error is going to be user dot username. And the value is going to be um, username cannot be empty. And let's return as well. There we go. All right, here let's do also if um, string utils dot is empty, user dot get password, then we're also going to have, well, actually, no, let's give the password not, you don't have to have a, um, a password necessarily. Let's do if user, user dot get length dot, what is, is there? Oh right, user dot get get uh, get username dot length is more than sixty four since in um, the SQL table we have a maximum of sixty four bytes uh, for our username and you can actually set this to whatever you want depending on what you set it in SQL. Um, let's do uh, user dot username and the error message is just going to be. Um, what, what, what is the what is their message again? Username too long. There we go. All right, very simple. And let's return as well. So the reason I'm returning here is um, just so that if I mean if we can't create the user anyway, so what's the point essentially of um, uh, what's the point of checking everything else? So we'll just waste time. Um, new user DAO. So the user is going to resubmit the request anyway. So there's no point in checking all the other validate methods. All right, there we go. Um, so now that we've done that, um, we need our DAO now for the next check that we're going to do. And here what we're going to do is we're going to do um, if DAO.getUser by name, uh, by name, user.getUserName. Uh, dot is empty. Yeah, if it's not empty, there we go. Um, then we're gonna uh, do the same thing. So add field error. Um, user dot get username. Whoops. Nope. What? Wait. Yeah. No. Add field error. User dot username. What am I still doing? Um, and then. Um, here we're going to have uh, the message uh, user already exists. All right, there we go. And let's return. Then here we're going to have uh, if string utils dot is empty user dot get password. Then same thing. Um, add field error user dot password now user dot password comma of user that's a password you know while we're doing this we might as well not do it password cannot be password let's just do too long here too long and then change this right here to uh, user dot get password um, dot is more than 
whoops, what, oh my god, I just deleted everything. Um, dot get password dot length is more than 64. Then that's also going to be um, password too long. And let's return here as well. All right, there we go. So now we've actually implemented this. So now let's go ahead and do DAO dot close here. And let's also in login action add a DAO dot close at the end. There we go. Just so that um, it automatically closes everything. Um, and we actually don't really need to close here, but it's better. It's, it's just better by convention to close. So just so that we don't leave too many sessions open and uh, session factories. Okay. So in theory, that should be it. That should be it. So let me take a look exactly what... Um, Maybe I forgot something. Oh right, of course. Um, we did. We did forget something. So we forgot the mo the most important part, really. Um, right here in register action, we essentially validate the user. You know that it actually um, that it's a. You know we can we can add this user into the database, but we don't actually um, add him to the database. So here we're gonna have a user DAO DAO equals new user DAO, and then we're just gonna do DAO dot insert user user. There we go. Simple stuff. Simple stuff. Very simple stuff. Um, all right. So, so now let's do DAO dot close as well here. DAO dot close in case since our um, our uh, garbage collector may not take care of it. All right. There we go. So let's log in. Um, username. Well, actually, it definitely won't take care of it. Doesn't handle connections at least to my knowledge all right there we go so let's go and register um let's do username ba ba and then uh password let's see the password blank submit there we go all right and so now we can do back and password blank let's submit as well and you have logged in there we go perfect and now in our database we should be able to select all from users and there we go so now we have back with no password Perfect. So our uh, registration system works. All right. So now that we have that, we are, we, we're, we're actually going to go ahead and do in register action. Um, here, what we're going to go ahead and do, no, 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 in, in login action, we're actually going to implement uh, the session as well. So let's do private. So if you don't know how to get a session in struts, it's just private string, string object. And if you, if you really think about it, a session is essentially just a map of a string in an object, um, user session. There we go, and uh, let's import map. There we go, Java util, um, and let's uh, get generate getters and setters. Where, or where is it? Where is it? Where is it? User session. All right, there we go. And so here, what we can go ahead and do is right here, we can actually just do um, user session dot put uh, user. And the value is going to be um, the value is going to be what's oh no it's not going to be a string obviously it's going to be this dot user all right there we go okay so this just puts the uh, user into session and so that we can later get him from the uh, from the view um, just, so that, just because uh, later on when we're going to be implementing um, the friend functionality that's going to prove to be very useful. And so this is essentially how we get session. Um, Struts actually has an interceptor here that will um, sort of inject. I mean, it, it, it really isn't quite injecting as like beans, bean inject, but essentially it'll inject um, user session into our um, login action. So there we go, where we can actually use it. All right, so now that we've done that, these comments are, they're kind of annoying me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to delete them. I don't know why they're annoying me. They're, they just are. So I'm um, going to delete them. And there we go. All right. So now we have our uh, um, our whole account system is done. And if you notice in struts.xml, we have um, right here, we actually have uh, this package name is account system. And you'll notice here we have two actions. And so this is just an example of how we can, um, well, not how we can, how we actually do organize our actions inside packages. So that's why they were created. And that's how they help us essentially organize our application. We can actually organize it further to having things uh, by having things in different in different files. So, for example, we can have you know um, systems in one file, and I don't know. Let's just maybe we could have 
configuration for you know beta testing stuff in another file and then have them all in one master file included together in a, in a master stress.xml file but essentially this is really how it um how we can use packages but we're, we're not going to use um, different separate files because we just we just really don't need to for this application since it essentially uh, we're only going to have three actions and two packages so there's really no point in having too many files but this is essentially just an example of how we do that but yeah other than that um next time we're going to go ahead and go over start adding out setting up our uh, friend system so you can actually add friends um and so that will be that should be pretty cool we're gonna uh, we're gonna utilize um one too many so hibernate the whole idea of one too many um so that should be pretty fun as well um but yeah anyway um i'll see you next time till soon have a nice day i guess i mean it maybe it's not day where you are but have a nice whatever i'll see you soon